What's going on everyone? It's Justin here and today I've got a video showing you what is inside my camera bag. So I just recently switched some camera gear if you guys might have seen the previous episode and I decided that it was time for me to finally do a what's in my bag episode for the camera stuff where I go in depth of some of the accessories, the cameras that I like to bring with me when I travel and kind of just an overall look at the kit on a basis where I might shoot photo or video. As always, if you guys want to check out anything, I'm going to leave a link to everything down in the description section below. If you guys would like to see some more behind the scenes videos of my workflow and how I produce episodes, just make sure you subscribe to the channel, have post notifications on. And I also post a ton of behind the scenes over on my Instagram through stories. So just drop a comment down below as to what episode of behind the scenes you would like to see next. So beginning with the bag, the bags that I have been using for quite a while now are Peak Design. I have the 20L and also the 30L that they recently sent right here in the black color with 10 inside, which I really like. But the one that I personally use the most because I'm not as tall and kind of want a smaller bag is the 20L. So this is in a nice gray color with the red trim. And what I like about the Peak Design bag is that it actually looks pretty good. Most camera bags are super ugly and I don't really with that. So I decided to go with the Peak Design bag and this one right here is able to actually fit the Canon 1DX, but the 30L is probably the better option for most people out there if you're gonna be carrying a tall body like the 1DX. The 30L version is pretty much the same as the 20L, just a bit bigger. And the one I have here is in an awesome color, which has like the 10 on the inside and the blacked out look on the outside. So this is able to carry essentially the entire gear kit that you see me mention today. It's able to open from the top very nicely. It also has side compartments on both the left and right side. And another cool small feature that they have is that you can actually loop this around a little hook right here and lock it in. That way it's not as easy for anyone to open your bag and possibly steal stuff. There's also a handle on this side and the padding on the back is also something that is always nice to see, especially if you're carrying like 20, 30 pounds of gear in one bag. So take a look at the top here. The first thing that I have in here is the camera body. So I'm just gonna slide this out here. And that is the Canon 1DX Mark II. I recently just picked up two of them for both photo and video. And I did do a video where I talked more about the gear, but just to keep things short, this is great for both video and photo needs. It's a bit overkill when it comes to photo, but I feel like when it comes to video, I am using many of the features that this camera is known for, including 60p and 4K, the great 4K video, and sometimes 120 frames per second slow motion in 1080p. The autofocus is absolutely insane. The menus are actually pretty easy to get used to, even though it is a professional camera. And aside from that, the only thing that I really don't like about it is that the file size is massive when it comes to video. So I have to have SanDisk memory cards because they're reliable. And the one that I personally use is a 256 gig CFast card. For those who are wondering, this camera has two slots, including a compact flash and CFast cards, and those are not the same slots. They do use different adapters. And for the most part, you're able to get away with using a compact flash card, which is much cheaper, but not as fast. And if you're recording 4K video at 24 frames, you're gonna be fine. But if you plan to do 60p, then you do need a faster CFast card. This camera can also shoot 16 frames per second because it is pretty much the go-to for sport photographers. And of course, if you wanna use it at its max speed, you're gonna need the faster CFast cards for that as well. The lens that I currently have on it right now is 16 to 35 f4 with is that is the first generation and it's a great lens for video because it has is so this camera doesn't actually have a stabilization or anything so if you're going to do handheld you do want to have a lens that has is in some situations if you're doing run and gun the autofocus is decently fast it's not too heavy so just as a wide lens or a run and gun lens this is my choice and the lens that i actually use the most is the 24 to 70 that i'm filming with right now on the 1dx as well and that is kind of the go-to lens for everyone I feel like almost every single person that shoots on Canon, I feel like every single person who shoots on Canon, especially full frame and has a single L lens has a 24 to 70 in the kit. Moving on with some of the other things in the compartments, the side one right here is able to easily open up and show you what is inside the other parts of the bag. And you can also move the dividers around depending on what you're going to need. So just look at the bag right here. The first lens that I have on the mid compartment is the 100 millimeter macro at f2.8 with IS and I love this lens. At first, I really wasn't using it that much because 100 millimeters is not the easiest thing to shoot with. And if you want that good background compression when it comes to B-roll of products, phone videos, then this is gonna be the lens you wanna use. Another lens that I've kind of thought about picking up recently after using this one is a 7200 at f2.8, but the lens is so big and heavy that I'm just gonna try to stick with the 100 mil macro for now. Next up, the other lens in the kit is a 35 millimeter 1.4, and I am a huge fan of this so far. And I know the Sigma is a cheaper alternative, but because I had already gone with everything else Canon and the weather sealing on this, I decided that the 35 millimeter second generation was a good investment. It's great for photos and videos, but especially for photos if you're doing a lot of portrait stuff or streetwear, because 35 millimeter is kind of that good middle ground for video and photo. Where in full frame photo mode, it is an easy focal length to work with, but in 4K video, where there is a crop on the 1DX, this is pretty much 
close to the equivalent of a 50 millimeter. This is definitely my newest pickup and I try to use this lens as much as possible, but if you guys noticed by now, I try not to have too many lenses. My total kit has about four lenses and on a typical shoot, I'll probably bring two to three. This one and the 24 to 70 though never leave my gear bag. If you guys might have also noticed, I do have this white sticker on everything and it is actually a Casey Neistat inspired please do the right thing sticker, which has my phone number and email address in case anything goes lost. Although it looks kind of dumb, it is much better than losing thousands and thousands of dollars of gear from leaving it somewhere, which is something that I'd probably do. Before I move on to the next product though, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is a great place to learn anything about video, photo, production in general, and even the business side of things when it comes to marketing. And like I've said before, everything I've ever learned about video, photo, production, and even the business side of things when it comes to marketing was all through online information. I think there's no better way of learning from people who are great at what they do and want to share with others, and Skillshare has thousands of photo and video courses readily available. If you guys want a two month trial completely free, the first 500 people to sign up with my link will get that. So just make sure you check out the link on screen or in the first link in the description down below, and you can essentially start browsing all of the courses that you might want to learn about specifically for the next two months. I'm always trying to get better at photo, video, and production, and Skillshare is honestly something that I've been using quite a bit. Next up, the microphone that I use when I'm on the go is the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. This is their newest generation that is able to go on and off automatically when it's plugged into your camera. And this is actually the second time I record this video because I didn't have my main mic on right here. So if I was using this mic, I wouldn't have had that issue. The new model also has a rechargeable battery via micro USB, which is very nice to see. The old one you see is nine volt. But in terms of audio quality, I would say this is okay. It's not the best out there, but if you're on the go, then this is probably one of the better options that you can get. When it comes to some of the video accessories that I have, I do need quite a bit of storage when shooting on the 1DX2 in 4K. So I do have a CFast card reader that I carry around with me, and I think the best one is SanDisk because for those who don't know, the CFast card is actually a different adapter than Compact Flash. Even though they look like they're a similar size, they do have a different kind of prong setup. So I do have a SanDisk one that I carry around with me. And when it comes to storage, one of my favorite new little drives is the SanDisk Extreme Pro. And this one right here is two terabytes and it is able to allow me to have a nice portable setup for storing footage, backing up, and also running as a scratch disk. It's just so crazy to see how small, thin, and light this is and how it has two terabytes of flash storage built in. And it also uses USB-C, which works with my MacBook very nicely. For my main video setup, I do have a faster SanDisk Extreme 900 two terabyte drive that is used with Thunderbolt 3 on my MacBook Pro 15 inch. But for on the go, I think this is the perfect size. With the Peak Design bag, there is also a compartment with smaller accessories and also your laptop on the back. So kind of the things that I bring with me everywhere is a mouse because I don't really like using keyboards. This is the MX Anywhere from Logitech. And aside from that, I also have obviously my Apple AirPods, which pretty much live in my ears. I love them so much and surprisingly haven't lost them yet. But if I'm on the plane, a pair of headphones that I love to use so much is the Bose Quiet Comfort, which is active noise cancellation right here. It needs to be charged up occasionally. And of course, also the dongle life on the iPhone, the computer, everything that Apple makes now. There's also the volume controls here. And I personally don't really like to use the over ear headphone setups for anything. So the earbuds have been great to me and for listening to music or watching movies, I love these. If you can though, I do recommend getting the older generation because it is almost the same thing and much cheaper. When it comes to my portable laptop of choice, I use the MacBook Pro 13 inch touch bar from 2017. And this model is just the baseline and it's actually served me pretty well when it comes to even some basic video editing, but for photo editing, it is great. The 15 inch laptop is what I use as like an everyday computer for video editing. And I'm super excited to get my hands on the MacBook that Apple just announced yesterday with six cores, 32 gigs of RAM and all that, but the price is insane. So I'm gonna pick it up to review for you guys and decide whether or not I want to keep it. But on the go, this computer is the one that I personally use and it's light enough for me and has a decent battery life to take everywhere I go. If you're gonna be taking around a lot though, I definitely recommend getting a dbrand skin like the one I have on the bottom to prevent it from scratches because this thing does go everywhere with me and I used to take it to school as well. And I'm personally a big fan of the bamboo and marble when it comes to MacBook skins. So I'm gonna leave a link to that down below and then make it for both the 13 inch, 15 inch and other laptops out there. Another tool that is very important for video makers is an ND filter. So a lot of times if you're filming outside in a very bright situation, you might notice that if you're gonna bring your f-stop down to 1.8, you really can't match the 180 rule for shutter speed, which in 24 frames is a shutter speed of 50. Without the ND filter outside, I found myself often having to crank my shutter speed even above 500, close to 1000, which doesn't look very good. But at the same time, a lot of people were recommending an ND filter from Tiffin, the variable ND, and I actually had one for quite a while. But the thing is, the colors just never look that good because at the end of the day, it's two panes of glasses in front of your main glass element. 
I ended up going with a single stop ND filter from Tiffin called the Natural ND. It is not a variable ND and it comes in many different levels. And the one I picked up was six stops and when shooting at f1.8 or so, it's actually perfect at six stops and it's really all I've needed. I didn't have to pick up anything else in terms of NDs and occasionally I might have to boost the ISO a little bit above 100, which is totally fine. But if you were to get one ND filter, I would say that from my personal experiences, the Tiffin Natural ND filter at six stops is going to be good for most people. Obviously ND filters aren't the cheapest out there and every lens has a different kind of filter thread size. So I would say get the largest filter thread available, which is 82 millimeters and just get step up rings and step down rings that are like $5 each and it should be able to fit on all of your lenses. Even though the next few things aren't exactly in my camera bag, these are things that do travel with me a lot and one of them is a drone. So I used to have the Phantom line and I never ever brought that on a flight because it was just something that I didn't think I would use and it was a bit inconvenient. So the drone I think has been a good middle ground for someone like myself is a DJI Mavic Air. So this drone shoots 4K 30 or 2K 60 and for what I need, it is great. It shoots in D-Log as well so I can grade the footage. I also have an ND8 filter from Polar Pro that is on the front here, which is very important if you're shooting outside. It also has object avoidance. It controls from your smartphone. The battery life is 21 minutes. I've talked about this a lot, so I'm not going to go into great detail today, but this drone is pretty much what gets it done when I'm traveling. And although there is better quality drones out there, including the Phantom 4 Pro and stuff that I kind of want to check out, for me, this is the one drone that I have no excuses not to bring everywhere with me. Another piece of gear that I started using a lot recently is a Zhiyun Crane 2. And the reason why I need this is because the 1DX2 doesn't have any sort of stabilization built in. So if you want to get those nice cinematic shots that look like they're straight out of the movies, if you're good at using it, the Zhiyun Crane 2 is what's able to get that done. And there really is only a couple models available that work with the 1DX2 because of the tall body. This crane is super powerful and after balancing it and having quite a bit of practice with it, you're able to get some pretty nice shots. The battery life is also super good and you also have some control over the camera from here that is very accessible from your natural grip. And there is also a follow focus setup that you can use with this crane as well. If you guys take a look at some of the footage here, it looks great. And I think the best part about it is that it is pretty small and portable and much nicer than having to carry a DJI Ronin M, for example, which is just a whole setup on its own. As for portable tripod setup, for the past few years, I've been taking tripods on trips like the one I've got in front of me, and it's just so inconvenient. So if you guys want something that is nice and portable, then the one that I've been using lately with the 1DX2 is the one from iFootage and it's called the Cobra 2 C120. It also comes in a taller 180 model. And on the top, I've got a Komodo K5 fluid head and this total setup is nice and light because it is carbon fiber. It's able to easily extend up and down um, like that. And there's also legs on the bottom to have it stand and it's super sturdy from my experience because at first I was a bit worried about it not being able to hold the 1DX2 and having it tip over and stuff. But if you need to adjust the bottom and the level, it's easy to do so there. And if you just wanna walk around and have it without the legs, there's a nice smooth base here as well. As for camera straps, I actually had a couple questions about this and the one that I'm using and I've seen a lot of other 1DX users have as well is the Peak Design one. So as someone who shoots both photo and video, it's really annoying to have a strap that is always wrapped around your camera. If you have it on your tripod, it's easy to trip over it, get it hooked on stuff. So with this setup, I'm able to very easily just unhook and hook back on the strap, which pretty much gives me no excuse to not go anywhere run and gun without a strap on my camera because I have dropped cameras in the past. So essentially all you have to do is just Push it in like this and you're good to go. You can just take it, go, and when you have it on the tripod again and want to remove the strap, just unhook it. It literally takes seconds and in my opinion, it's a no-brainer for any camera user out there. I also have a hand strap for it which works with the same mount. So if I'm just going for a quick shoot and don't want to have a full sling on me, that's kind of just a safety strap and it is able to hold the weight of the camera no problem, obviously. Another camera that I've been checking out lately though is a Sony a7 III and this is probably the best camera for its money. It's full frame, it has five axis stabilization, it shoots great 4K video and it comes in at a price in the US of I think just around $2,000. It'll be something that I just try out for a little bit and I also have the Sigma MC11 adapter on it that allows you to mount all of the Canon lenses which is nice and I think for any Sony user out there it does make a lot of sense to invest in Canon glass because autofocus still works very well. Otherwise thank you guys so much for watching this video of my camera gear bag and if you guys have any questions about the gear or the choices I've made make sure you leave them down in the comment section below and I think as of now I can definitely see myself using this set of gear for the next few years for both photo and video because I kind of just wanted to invest in it all at once learn to use it and kind of master it over the years. As always leave a comment down below if you guys have any video suggestions and I'll see you all in the next one.